Hi, I'm Stephen with Alberta Urban Garden .ca. On today's episode, we're going to talk about companion planting, such as marigolds, and dive deeper into the issue. So what is companion planting? It is when you select two plants that, when put together, benefit either one or both. Often, companion planting has attributed characteristics such as decreased pests, increased pollination, and increased flavor. Companion planting is a form of polyculture and has been around since the dawn of agriculture about 10,000 years ago. Much like the dawn of agriculture, companion planting was discovered independently all across the globe and likely started almost as soon as we had domesticated plants. Marigolds have a wide variety of companion planting characteristics attributed to them. In a 2009 study, they aim to see if white cabbage and marigolds were actually good companion plants. Cabbages fall prey to all sorts of pests. The Polish researchers in this found that cabbage interspersed with marigolds actually had less pest damage than those without. This held true for a number of different pests. The Polish researchers concluded that this was the most effective pest management strategy to intercrop cabbages with pot marigold. In a similar trial, they applied the same principles to snap beans. The Mexican bean pest damage was found to be lower in areas surrounded by marigolds. However, the researchers didn't find any difference or in fact more predation when surrounded by other common companion plants such as pot marigold or petunias. Similarly, corn earworm had a variety of different results, including increased damage when surrounded by companion plants. This led the researchers to determine that companion planting was not a useful control strategy for insect pests in a home garden plot. Let's move on to nematode pests. Now nematodes generally are a big driver in the nutrient cycle in the soil. They consume bacteria, releasing the nutrients back into the soil. But about 15% of them are actually harmful. What they do is they attack the root system of plants, causing legions, weakening the plant, and either killing it themselves or weakening it so that other pests can kill it. By planting marigolds in close proximity to plants that are sensitive to nematode damage, you can keep them away, right? University of California, Riverside, in July of 2007, released a paper discussing just this. While they confirmed that marigolds can kill nematodes, there seems to be very specific species reactions. And that the marigolds must be alive in order to do this. So using them as a cover crop and tilling them in make them ineffective. The study went on to say that in fact, if you do not have the right pairing of species, the nematode populations can actually increase by the presence of the wrong marigolds. When using marigolds for nematode suppression, it is important to do your research so that you can get the correct marigold to kill the correct nematode. Of special note, there are other plants that have nematode killing capacity that when tilled into the soil are still active. So we started off with a claim that marigolds can increase pollination, deter pests, and enhance flavor. A couple of these research studies said yes, in fact you're correct. But in some cases, nope, doesn't hold true. So what do we take back from this? I want to take a critical look at, at all the practices I do. Starting off with home garden field trials, testing out the claims of biochar and rock dust, two products that are highly touted in our, in our community. I'll admit, I've planted marigolds under the assumption that companion planting would add benefit to my garden. Now likely, I will continue to use marigolds because, well, I enjoy the way they look in my garden. They add a splash of color in otherwise a very green jungle. As many of you know, I've promoted the use of leaf mulch, comfrey, actively aerated compost tea, and used coffee grounds. In addition to joining Patrick's actively aerated compost tea trials next year, I'm going to put the other three to the test, using lab results and a series of small experiments to see if they in fact really work. After all, we're looking for a garden that we enjoy. Why not embark on lifelong learning and follow along in these trials? Is there a garden practice that you were surprised to learn that was either not effective or in fact harmful in your garden? I would love to see them in the comment section below. Thank you very much for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.